Hello Floss Tube. My name is Amber Fisher and I am a um, cross stitcher out of San Antonio, Texas. So I, this is my first Floss Tube and I really just got the urge to make a video because all of you are so inspiring to me and I don't know why sitting still and watching somebody talk about their projects for sometimes more than 30 minutes is interesting but it's fascinating to me and I know many of you are like that too and I will just sit and uh, when I have time off from work and just watch video after video after video um, I'm a big fan of some of y'all out there I watch a lot of um, Priscilla and Chelsea um, I watch um, Night Owl Stitcher, Addicted Sisters, um, Twisted Stitcher. There's a, a lot of you that I that I watch and um, that I enjoy. And so, um, and all of you have kind of different um, styles and things. And some of you out there, um, if you watch this and um, kind of get a feel for what my style is more like. If you know of floss tubers who kind of have a similar like look to what I like, um, I would love for you to tell me who they are because I am um, really, I love to watch it and I really want some more people to follow and especially some people who have kind of a similar vibe to me because I'm not a country country um, person. Even though I'm down here in Texas, I really like more, a uh, little bit more modern, bright colors, um, stuff like that. So if you know anybody, I appreciate it. But um, I just really wanted to start making videos also as a way to keep track of myself and what I'm doing and um, see myself improve. So I um, am by day a nutritionist. I have a private practice in nutrition. So who knows if I get kind of going, I may start talking about nutrition down the road. I, I don't know. I might even incorporate some of it. If you're interested in that, by the way, I'll link below to my, um, my nutrition website. So I do most of my work on there. I, it's amberfishernutrition.com and I write a lot of articles and do a lot of videos on my Facebook page and things like that all about nutrition because that's my passion. But um, my other passion that has always been an important part of my life has been crafting. And I have loved it since I was a little girl. I um, was joking with my mom the other day because I think that I must have inherited this gene from my great grandmother. She was a huge, um, she loved to knit, crochet, she did cross stitch and embroidery, and she was very good. I have some of her sweaters that she made. I uh, saved them from going to the Goodwill pile um, a while ago. And so um, she was really into all that, but nobody in the family line since then um, has been into that stuff. And I just kind of developed a really strong interest for it um, when I was younger. I started crocheting. That was the first thing I learned. I actually um, learned from some women at this group that I used to go to at my church called um, Threads of Love, and they would make uh, burial gowns and things like that for premature infants. And so I learned crochet from them, and I used to go to that every week, and um, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. Um, there were some really sweet ladies who taught me all they knew. And so I learned crochet and I was really into that all throughout um, my growing up. I got into sewing a lot in high school. I did my senior project on um, fashion design because I really wanted to do that. I had this vintage dress form that I found. I call her Marsha the mannequin and she's still, um, she's in my garage right now because um, I don't sew very much anymore, but um, in college I taught myself to knit. And so that has been my big, uh, my really big craft, my big love for the last um, however long since then, 15 years or so. I've been knitting and I've gotten really into it. I did it as a business for several years, uh, making newborn things. Started doing that while I was in college to help put myself through school and um, it really took off and I still do some of that. I sell my knitted stuff at a local shop here um, in town and um, I really like doing that. I love knitting and that's um, something that I, I'm really good at. So it's fun when you get with a craft to where you're at the advanced level and you can start learning really cool techniques and, and you can you know, accomplish anything that you want to. It feels totally 
unlimited and that's really exciting. Um, but also it can get a little old. So after 10 years or, or more of knitting year round throughout the year, no matter how hot it has been here in San Antonio and it gets hot, um, I was knitting every single day and I always wanted to, I loved it. Um, I've started the last couple of years just getting a little bit burnt out of the knitting. So I took up um, painting, watercolors and things like that in the summer, but I was really missing the last couple of years um, something to do with my hands while I'm sitting watching TV. Um, you know, I've done a lot more reading, which is great, but um, I really like threads. I like fabric. I like color. I like... Um, I like textiles and I love textile related art. So I really wanted to be doing something like that. So I got kind of inspired last year to start, you know, picking up some embroidery and trying that. I took a little um, beginner's class in embroidery just to learn some stitches and things like that. Um, but several years ago, my mother-in-law, she was always a really big cross stitcher and she was awesome. I mean, some of the stuff that she made is really intense. Um, you know, she'll do those like full coverage, um, crazy things that I would never attempt to do. But um, she has a, a, obviously a big stash and things like that. So she let me kind of look through it and take some things and, and get started on trying that. And I tried it for a little bit, um, but I didn't, what I realize now is that I didn't really have the right materials and things like that because I didn't have the right fabrics and that really makes all the difference. Um, having everything laid out for you and ready and kitted up and everything for you to start a project instead of kind of have the guesswork of like, is this fabric too small? Is it too large? All that kind of stuff. So, um, so I, 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 I was really into knitting and I just didn't really pick up cross stitch for several years. And then this year I thought, well, I want, you know, it's getting warm. It's already really warm down here in San Antonio, and I'm sorry for those of you. I just had some friends in town over the weekend from Wisconsin, and, um, you know, they their flight was delayed because it's like the worst winter storm um, in like 100 years or something up there in Wisconsin, Minnesota. So I'm sorry, guys. It's really warm here, um, which is great. It's the best time of the year to, to be down here. Uh, but I thought, well, I'm sick of knitting. I burned myself out over Christmas break making these really detailed Fair Isle Norwegian stockings for everybody. And I made the pattern up myself and all this stuff. So I just wanted to do something fun that I wouldn't have to really, I mean, that I'd have to focus on and think about, but not plan quite so much as when I was making my own patterns and things like that. So I said, I'm going to try picking cross stitch up. So this was probably a little over a month ago that I decided to pick cross stitch back up and and try it um, again and so I'm a you know very new at it um, so you're gonna see if you're an experienced cross stitcher you're probably gonna judge my stuff so please don't keep in mind my level here but um, uh, yeah, I get a little ambitious because I'm I'm so good at knitting and crochet that I just kind of think, you know, I think a lot of people think that the people who are really good at cross stitch, they, I've heard them tell me, you know, I tried to pick up knitting. I thought it would be easy because I'm so good at cross stitch, but it was really hard. And same thing, um, in reverse, you know, for me, the thing about knitting is that you don't have to think about it that much because I'm so, I know what I'm doing so well. Um, and you know, you can kind of like let go and just like, watch TV while you're doing it. But you really have to look at your stitching. So um, to make sure you're in the, you know, the right hole and all that stuff. So that's been um, a little bit of a change for me, but it's been fun and I'm really, really enjoying it. And so I've got some um, works in progress. I don't have any finishes because I have yet to finish anything um, worth showing you. I, I have some stuff that I had finished um, several years ago when I first started to try cross stitch. Um, but I'm not gonna show those. So I've got some works in progress and some haul and some things like that that I'm gonna show you in a minute. But um, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun. And what's really inspiring me is watching all of you. So every day I'm watching you all and um, you know, you're in you inspire me to kind of keep going and keep trying and um, keep uh, working away on my projects and all that stuff. So, um, I am going to show you what I've got in the works, my whips, as y'all say. So, um, 
The first thing is actually an embroidery project. It's not cross stitch, but it is, um, and it's kind of a local thing. It's Gertie the Goat. You can't see her. By Sandy Jenkins. Um, Sandy Jenkins is a really, really sweet woman that I met um, in Fredericksburg, Texas. She owns a little embroidery um, shop there and all the designs and things that are there are her own designs, which is pretty cool. So she's got, you know, painted canvas. She's got um, embroidery. She's got cross stitch. She has, she has all the different needle work arts. I didn't, there wasn't any knitting or anything like that in there. It was all, um, needle stuff, but, um, it was pretty neat. And I thought, you know, I needed something that with embroidery that was like a little bit more of a beginner's level. Um, and what I realized as I got into this was it's maybe a little bit too much of a beginner's level because it's so easy that I'm getting bored with it, but it's so cute. And it really, I wanted to get it because it totally matches my kitchen. My kitchen is like fun. Um, you know, I have like granite countertops and, um, like dark cabinets. And so I like to bring some brightness in there with like bright colors and whites and things like that. So I have kitchen towels and stuff, um, cotton towels and everything. And I thought this would go really well with them. I have a lot of cobalt blue in there and stuff. So this is Gertie. Gertie the goat and I just think she's so cute she's adorbs um so you know these are like French knots here and you can see that her eye looks kind of weird a little whacked out um but my French knots are pretty decent like I was impressed with my French knot skills uh because those are like kind of hard um so yeah, I'm still working on it. You know, I've got these flowers here and then these are gonna be little blue flowers made with like lazy daisy stitch and stuff. But I did all the stems and everything already. And then there's some things that go in the middle here. So she's almost done, but not quite done. So that's Gertie the goat. I think she's really cute. I just, I have this issue and I've always had this issue with knitting too, where if I'm doing something for myself, I know some of you are like this. If I'm doing something for myself, I will get really inspired and really excited and I will do probably 90% of it. And then I will not finish it out. And I don't know why, like the last, so I have this sweater that I've been working on knitting. Um, I knitted the majority of it uh, like six years ago. It's a really cute little pullover sweater with um, a yoke that's done in Fair Isle. Really cute. Um, you know, the good thing about it is that it's still in style. I could wear it this winter. Or I could have worn it six years ago. I mean, it doesn't really go out of style because it's adorable. Um, I finished everything, everything on that sweater except for um, closing up, sewing up part of the armpit that was still left a little bit open and putting on the buttons. And that's it. That's all I haven't done on it. But because I haven't done those things, I haven't been able to wear it um, in six years. And every year I pull it out of my unfinished projects bin, my knitting bin, and um, look at it and say, this is the year I'm gonna finish this and wear it. And I don't, and I did that this last year. But this last year I did buy the buttons. So I'm on my way to finishing it. But, um, I think part of the problem is it gets so warm here so fast. It's like by the time you start feeling like, ooh, winter's coming, all of a sudden it's spring. So, uh, you know, there's not much occasion to wear a full, like a 100% wool Fair Isle sweater down here, which is um, good and bad. I mean, it's a it's definitely a blessing to live somewhere where we don't have such harsh winters. Um, so, you know, I recognize that for sure, but also, as a person who's always been attracted to um, textile arts and um, knitting and all these kind of like Nordic um, British Isles type crafts, it's kind of stanks because I don't like shawls and like light scarves and stuff like that. I'm just not into that. So um, what can you do? I make a lot of hats. Uh, so that's Gertie the goat. Next, um, 
this is something that I picked up when I went into my local um, New York shop. I get, I think we call them in LNSs. Um, but it's Country Cottage Needleworks Lovebirds. And I thought it was so cute. But the reason I, I got it was because um, there's a girl that I work with and I really want to get her into cross stitch also because I need a buddy. So I know there's one cross stitcher out there and I'm blanking on your name. I don't know if you'll ever see this video. You might though. So if, you, if you're watching it, I think you'll know who you are. You look like you're about my age somewhere around 30 and um you're from san antonio you're, i think your name's chelsea or something like that anyway i've been watching your videos i would have to go back and, and figure it out um after i upload this but um yeah i know you go to the same needle workshop as i do because there's only one here in town and everything and you said you're involved with like a group of stitchers and i um yeah I need friends. I need stitching friends so bad. So, so bad. I'll teach y'all in it if you want to learn. So, um, anyway, if anybody knows, if anybody's from San Antonio and wants to make, um, a group or knows a group I can join, that would be fab. Because I went to, to Stitches from the Heart here in San Antonio, um, picked up this little pattern I got. I kitted it up for her. I got her all the stuff that she would need and I took it to her and, um, you know, I t and I taught her what to do as, you know, to the best of my ability. And, um, yeah, she, she didn't pick it up for a few days and I was like, Hey, have you worked on it? She's like, oh, I'm going to work on it over the weekend. And then, um, today's Monday and I went into work for a little bit and saw her and asked if she'd work on it and she had not. So I don't think she's going to be my cross stitch buddy, which is a bummer. But uh, luckily while I was there, I also got the same thing for me because I thought it was so cute and I had to do it too. So I've been having fun and I'm trying to convince my, my younger sister to get into it with me also. Um, but she's getting married next month and so she's all, it's all about the wedding right now. So I don't have any friends who want to do stuff like this with me and it's such a bummer because I love people. I love knitting. I love cross stitching you know be my friend okay who knows I may not put this up on the internet I'm getting a little crazy here y'all are gonna be like who is this weirdo from Texas okay so this is what I have so far on it lovebirds they're just super cute and I mean I know you can see probably I don't know if you can see super close or anything but like all my mistakes here like um I put an extra space between lovebirds on accident and then I'm not going to tear it out. Okay. So I'm not a perfectionist. Well, I won't say that I'm a perfectionist in some ways, but not in others. So with stuff like this, I'm not a perfectionist. Like if in a knitting pattern, I make a mistake, then I just try to fix it later. So, um, I know you can't do that with some cross stitch patterns too. You have to frog the whole thing, but with this, it was like, okay, it was half a space between. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and I, and you know, making all my stitches go the same way, but all like on this one, I got like all into it and realized that I had done the whole thing going the opposite direction. So then for a, for a little bit, I was like, well, maybe I'll just do the whole right side of it facing one direction and the whole left side facing the other. And then I said, no. And then I thought, well, should I tear it up? Yeah. So uh, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this. I just think it's cute. So, um, yeah, the rest of it all looks really good though. It's, it's, it's getting there. So, you know, I'm working on the, the floral part on top and then I'll come here and work on the bottom. And this is really fast, this one. I only work on it like maybe half an hour a day max. And I'm already like more than halfway done. I've only had it for like a week, so. Um, I didn't get to work on it over the work on anything over the weekend because I had um, friends in town, so I was busy taking them to all the tourist sites here in San Antonio. But um, this is kind of like my big project that I'm working on right now. This is um, big, I say. I know it's not that big, but Happy Nest, Satsuma Street. Um, I got also got this as stitches from the heart. It's too cute, so. You can see that I'm, I don't know how done I am with this. Definitely more than half. 
I've still got to do all the this up here and like this part of the tree right here. And yeah, this one is full of mistakes too. Like, um, I'm not going to point them all out, but one that I will because it just cracks me up is like this tree. So I tried to outline the tree because I didn't want to fill it in. I hate filling stuff in, like, especially if it's an ugly color like this brown. I mean, it looks, I mean, it's a tree trunk. It is what it is. It's got to be brown. But um, yeah, I wasn't feeling it. So um, I tried to outline it. And then, you know, so I could do other stuff like the birds and stuff. And uh, when I outlined it, I accidentally added half a stitch. So there's this line all right here is all half a stitch too large. And I'm just going with it. Because the good thing about this pattern is nothing, very few things are connected to other things um, in a way that if you were to mess up one, it would mess up the other. It's real easy to kind of like just flip stuff around just a little bit so that it, it works. So that's exciting because that's what I need um, in my first projects. But of course, the most fun part of cross stitching is all of the stash that you start developing with all these grand ideas. I have, you know, of course I have these grand ideas and I'm gonna finish all these projects and get them all framed or finish them out somehow and hang them up and then I'm just gonna be constantly working on a new project because I'm gonna get them done so fast. And um, cross-stitching takes time. So it's, it requires a lot of patience. It's teaching me patience, which is a good thing, uh, but yeah, I mean, I've been working on Happy Nest now for a couple of weeks, pretty solidly, like a couple, maybe an hour a day or so, maybe more some days. And it's definitely taken a while to get done. So, um, yes. Uh, so that is that, but um, it's good. So I have all this haul that I want to go through. Haul stash, haul stash. I know in a lot of other videos that I watch for like makeup and stuff like that, they call it haul. So I'm going to call it haul. Um, but yeah, I've started stocking up on patterns that I am perfectly accepting that I may never ever stitch because I know I'll, by the time I finish one project, I'm going to have something else and I'm just going to be dying to start. It's the same way with, with all my knitting projects. I have tons of yarn one of these days um you know if if i keep doing these videos and enjoy them enough then i'll show you guys my yarn stash because this is not it this is just one type of yarn that they were i used to sell hats made with this and they were um they were discontinuing it and so i stocked up and I'll do that a lot when they discontinue something that I that I was making a a uh, actual that I was selling something with it. And now I have all this yarn because I'm I'm not doing the knitting business um, on Etsy anymore right now. It's just too much with my nutrition business and everything. Um, and I'm just making things as I go as I go and then taking them to the shop to sell. But um, yeah, that's this is just this is like maybe one twenty fifth of my stash. I have a huge yarn stash. I've got really three really kind of big, um, I think they're supposed to be like hampers, but I use them for yarn in the living room here. And then in my um, craft room over there, which is really just a dumping ground for things that want to die, um, I have these big Tupperwares filled with yarn, like my ugly yarn that I don't really touch and I don't know why I don't just sell it or get rid of it, but I just can't let it, let it go. And then over here, these are all my, let's see if I can show you, these are all my cotton threads there um, for like making, uh, you know, like washcloths and things like that. And now my, and now it's not working. There we go. So, um, yes, on to haul. I know y'all are ready to see what I bought. So, um, I went on uh, 123 Stitch because um, Priscilla and Chelsea are always talking about 123 Stitch and I was like, what is this 123 Stitch? And is it going to be a problem for me? And yes, it has become a new addiction. So um, my mother-in-law, when she was here, I was uh, just a couple weeks ago, um, 
I was talking to her about embroidery and cross stitching and stuff. We actually went to the to Sandy Jenkins store together and I said, um, I asked her if she was working on anything and she said no, that she hadn't really, she kind of gotten burnt out on cross stitch I guess years ago and hasn't really picked it up for a long while. And that's sad to me, I want her to get back into it. So um, she had mentioned that if she could find a really good um, ship pattern with like realistic looking ships that are done in like a, you know, a scene where it's, it's full cross stitch all the way around, um, that she would pick that back up because that's something that she wanted to make for my father-in-law. So I found this on one, two, three stitch historic tall ships by uh, Stony Creek collection. And they've got like the Nina, the Pinta and the Santa Maria. The Mayflower, the USS Constitution, just a bunch of ships on oceans and you can see it's full coverage and they look very realistic because she doesn't like cutesy stuff like I do. Like, um, you know, um, like she's not into the, the patterns with like cute little houses or things like that. She likes more realis realistic looking stuff. So I saw this and it was only like $6. So I thought I'm going to get that for her and give that to her for Mother's Day or something. Um, so hopefully she doesn't watch floss tube or else she's going to know what she's getting. Um, and when I was at, uh, my, um, stitches from the heart, I picked up this one. This was what I had planned to do next, but now I have other plans. So, um, I'm going to start, probably start a longer rotation. I only have three things I'm working on right now. I'm about to finish one of them, so I can probably add in another one. But I want to do something Christmas related too so I can get some stuff done for for then because around Christmas time that's when I'm going to start knitting again so I won't have time for that. Um, but it's uh, Dog Park by Satsuma Street and it's so cute. I have two dachshund like dogs. I have one red dachshund. She's a puppy. She's three months. My aunt's dog had puppies so we got another puppy. Um, and then I have a Chewini who's seven. Her name's Elsa. And I have a Bichon Freeze who is um, eight. And her name's Lulu. And they are downstairs right now, probably outside. They have a doggy door. So they like to be outside on days like this and sunbathe. But yeah, it's a little dachshund on there. And I just think it's so cute. Reminds me of my puppers. And then um, I got this. Welcome to the forest because I'm going to do the whole welcome to the forest thing. So I just thought it was really cute. And I saw the the one with the little deer that's coming out. Um, so I'm psyched about that. I think I'm going to do them all separate and then make like a little um, collage wall or something with them for like spring, summer. And then um, I have on order Santa's Village. Um, and I'm going to get with my um, get with my local shop to get the fabric and everything for that and um i think i'm going to do that all as one piece but then i may do some more of these little collage walls for different um seasons or something and then this one is my next christmas project i just thought it was really pretty i like the pearl gray linen on the back it's silent night um country cottage needleworks i like all their stuff because it's cute but it also has bright colors it's not too country country not too antique -y for me so, um, yeah, I really like that. So I'm going to probably start that one next. I might even start it today. Who knows? But, um, that is all I have for you right now. And I am going to keep working on all this stuff and upload this onto YouTube. And then hopefully next week I'll be back with another video. Thank you guys for watching, those of you who watched, and please let me know that you watched. Um, give me a little shout out below, a comment, um, and um, so I can get to know you and um, follow your uh, floss tube also. So thanks so much. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye.